Hi, I'm Chuck Sims and I'm from the Astronomical Society of Eastern Missouri here to talk to you today about the Library Telescope. In this video, I'll show you how to use the telescope itself and what you get when you check it out. I'll also then show you how to use the red dot finder and the zoom eyepiece so that you can get the best viewing possible. So let's get started. This is an Orion Starblast 4.5 Astro Reflector Telescope. It's been augmented so that none of the pieces come loose, so that when you check it out, there's nothing you need to take and put in or do anything with. It's all self-contained. This is the Newtonian Telescope on Dobsonian base. So the Newtonian just means that it uses mirrors instead of lenses. It has a 4.5 inch aperture, 114 millimeters, which means that it has a four and a half inch mirror at the bottom of the optical tube. And that's what allows it to bring in the light, which is roughly equivalent of bringing in 250 human eyes light. So it's quite a bit. The focal length is 450 millimeters. And for those in the cameras or the telescopes, that makes it an, a focal ratio F4 which is a very fast telescope. Now fast in this case just means you see wider as opposed to very narrow first lower telescopes. Okay, so let's walk through the telescope itself. So starting at the top, we have the end cap, which covers the optical tube. The end cap really does nothing more than when you're not using it, you want this on to keep dust, debris, and anything else out of the telescope to keep the mirrors clean. The cleaner the mirrors, the better the scene you're gonna get. In the end cap itself, we have a moon port. So when you're looking at the moon, especially when it's a bright moon, half or up to full, you want to put this on and pop that out. What it does is it blocks out about 80% of the light. The moon's still just as big. It's very beautiful in here. It's just not so bright you're going to see spots in your eyes when you turn, take your eye off the eyepiece. But it's got beautiful views. Next, we have the tube clamp and the tube collar. So more than just holding the optical tube onto the arm. If you get something into view here and you want to show it to someone who's a little smaller than you, usually children, if you loosen that a little bit, turn it down, tighten it back just a hair, then they should be able to see the exact same object you did without you having to bend down and re-get it in there again. So we use this quite a bit when we're using this in the field and you know, kids love it. Okay. Next we have the platform, which allows it to go left and right, and the arm, which allows it to go up and down. This is what makes the Dobsonian a Dobsonian that makes this so popular. This is so easy to use. Okay, we have a Celestron zoom eyepiece. The eyepiece allows magnification to change between 19x and 56x, and we have a sticker on here to cover that just in case you forget what they are. I will cover this eyepiece in more depth in a different video. And then we have a red dot finder. So the red dot finder allows you to see more of the sky. When you're looking through the eyepiece, you're seeing a very small piece of the sky. When you look through the red dot finder, you see a much bigger piece. So when you're looking to point it on a planet or a star or whatever it is, the moon, you want to see a big piece of the sky to put that red dot on so that you can easily get it into the eyepiece. I will cover the red dot finder in more depth in a different video also. We have several stickers on here. One I covered already that shows the magnifications, but another one is our moon map. So when you find the moon in the eyepiece, this map is going to reflect exactly what you see, minus that the moon may not always be full, but the features will be in the spots that they should be on here. So it should be easy to find different things. We also have a do not look at the sun sticker and we emphasize this quite a bit. You should never look at the sun through this telescope. It is a great nighttime telescope or even daytime though things will be flipped a little bit but it's not a solar telescope. Do not look at the sun. You will most undoubtedly damage your eye if you try and could go blind. So you do not want to do that. Okay. Um, want to go through a few warnings. Um, 
Don't put anything into the optical tube itself. Try to keep this covered when not in use and try to keep children and other things from dropping things in here. You could damage the mirrors and that is what makes a telescope work, is the mirrors. Do not attempt to clean the object. So let's say someone with muddy fingers or whatever came up and they're starting to touch everything and they get stuff on the mirror or they get stuff on the eyepiece. Don't try to clean them. If you try to clean them with regular tap water or cleaner, you will hurt them, damage them more than the mud or whatever itself. Bring it back to the library they'll give it to us and we'll get it clean properly so we can use it again. Um, we humans have very oily hands, fingers, whatever. So don't touch the eyepiece lens, that's the piece on the end here, or the mirrors with your fingers. The oil is actually harder to get off than mud and peanut butter and other things. So don't do that. And again, I'm gonna say, don't look at the sun. We can't emphasize that enough. As far as I know, no one has done that but we want to make sure that no one does. Now, last thing I want to cover real quick is this fanny pack, which covers three things. The first one is a headlamp. So if you're out in the dark, you want to have a little light and you also want to have free hands. So this allows you to put it on your head and it has several different settings. The first one is a red light. This is what you always want to use when you're out in the field working with a telescope is red light. It doesn't dilate the eyes as much if you get it into the, your eyes or someone else around you. White light on the other hand, it'll take about 20 minutes for some to recuperate and get back to where they were before they had their eyes dilated. So when you're ready to turn it off, just cover it with your palm and just push the button until you see it go out. Some of these have three settings, some have five. So just keep going until you see it go out. Next is a manual. The manual covers everything that we cover in our regular classes or in these videos. So just a good reminder if you just need anything, but the manual is great for covering everything. And last is the um, Pocket Guide to the Constellations by the National Audubon Society. This is a great read. It covers all the constellations, different time of years, different parts of the skies. It talks about uh, different objects in them, the relationship to each other. So great read for uh, both novices and for uh, people that have been doing it a while. And in this segment, we'll be talking about the red dot finder. Now the red dot finder is a pointing tool that allows you to point to an object that you can see in the sky. Now the beauty of this is if you can see it, then you can point to it and then you can quickly get it into the telescope and look at the eyepiece. There are three knobs on the finder scope, only one of which that we want the public to use. The knob underneath and the knob at the two far ends are for aligning both up and down, left and right, for aligning the finder scope to the eyepiece. We do that at the library on a pretty regular basis. So when you look at it, you should have good confidence that if you get in the, eye, the finder scope, you will find it in the eyepiece. The center one here with the white dot on it is the on, off, and brightness. So when the two white dots are together here, then it's off. As you turn it and you can hear a click, now you've turned it on. And as you keep dialing, the red dot that you see inside here will get brighter and brighter. So to use it, turn it on. And then what you need to do is get behind the telescope. I put your hands on both sides, find the red dot. And then at this point, you can easily move it around, point it on the object you want to get. And once you get it on there, then you can easily see it through the eyepiece. That is the beauty of the red dot finder. And today we're going to talk about the Celestron Zoom eyepiece. So this eyepiece has focal lengths from 24 millimeters to eight millimeters. And what that does is it allows your magnification to go between 19X and 56X. There is a chart here on the telescope that'll tell you that if you're at 24 millimeters, that you're at 19X. And as you turn it up to eight millimeters, then you're increased it to 56X. 
On the telescope itself, when you look at the eyepiece, you will see there is an arrow that points to what the focal length is. So in here, I've got it at 24 millimeters. The arrow will always be on top. So that way, when you're looking, you'll be able to easily see what your focal length is. So as you, as you want to look at an object, always start with the lowest magnification. So have the arrow pointing to 24. That will make it much easier for you to find the object in the field of view of the eyepiece. And then once you find it and center it, and you'll focus it, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, then you can slowly start turning counterclockwise. There you go. To increase the magnification. So you'll be looking through while you're doing this. You can see it get larger. It will get out of focus and you'll just refocus when you're done. And you turn it all the way up to the eight millimeters or however high magnification you want to go. Now, as far as the, the focuser, that is the two wheels here underneath the eyepiece. Whether you turn the left one or the right one, they work together, so turning them does the exact same thing. The goal is to get a nice sharp view. When you're not in view, it'll be fuzzy. And as it gets more out of focus, you'll notice that the fuzziness will increase. It'll get larger. So if you're turning it and it's fuzzy, but it's getting smaller, you know you're going the correct way. Now just be careful not to turn it too fast because it is possible to pass up that perfect focus and it'll start getting fuzzy again if you just turn too quick. I hope you enjoyed the program and now feel more comfortable using the wonderful telescope that the library has to offer. Thanks for watching and have fun stargazing.